Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for NCUA's webinar on how MDIs serve their communities. My name is Allie Lambersky. I am a credit union training coordinator here in the Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion at the NCUA, and I will be the moderator for today's program. Before we get started, I have just a few administrative announcements. If you're having any difficulty hearing my voice, please adjust the volume on your computer. If you're still having difficulty hearing my voice after, adjust the after adjusting the volume, please use the Q&A feature at the right-hand corner of your console to send us a message. A member of our tech support team will be able to assist you right away. In addition, please make sure that you allow pop-ups to this from this site to have full visibility to all materials shown today. And in approximately two weeks, a recording of this webinar will be available for on-demand viewing on our learning management system. This material will feature a closed caption video and the ability to download a PDF version of the PowerPoint presentation for today. To access these resources, you do need to have an account on the NCOA's learning management system. Good news is it is completely free for your account setup, and it is available for all credit union employees and volunteers. Like I said, it is completely free and is a great resource. We have over 200 courses and adding more uh, almost every day, it feels like. So I highly recommend creating an account. To create an account, please go to ncua.gov slash support services, select credit union resources and expansion, and then further select learning. From there, it will walk you through all of the steps to create your learning management account with us. And please allow 24 hours to have full access to all courses on that learning management system. Before we begin, I do have a brief disclaimer I must read out loud to you. The materials presented in this webinar are intended as an informative and educational summary of general information of minority depository institutions and the services they provide their communities. The NCUA has taken reasonable measures to ensure the quality of the data and other information produced by the NCUA that's available in this presentation. The NCOA, however, makes no warranty, express or implied, nor assumes any legal liability or responsibility for the accuracy, correctness, or completeness of any information that's available through this presentation, nor represents that its use would not infringe on privately owned rights. The slides are intended for education, educational and discussion purposes and do not constitute legal advice, nor replace independent professional judgments. Reference to any specific commercial product, process, or service by trade name trademark, manufacturer, or otherwise does not constitute an endorsement recommendation or favoring by the U.S. government or the NCUA. This is our agenda for today's webinar. I will provide opening remarks before turning the mic over to our moderator, Pamela Williams, to begin our program. Pamela will then lead our guests today through a roundtable discussion on how MDI serve their communities and the partnership opportunities available to them. During this presentation, please send in any questions that you may have for our speakers. If we have time at the end of our panel presentation today, we will be opening the floor up for questions from our audience. So please submit your questions using that Q&A feature at the right hand bottom side of your console to send in any questions during our presentation today. Before we get started, we have our traditional polling question that we ask in every webinar, just allowing us to learn a little bit more about who is joining us today. Our polling question is, what asset range best represents your credit union? A, up to 50 million, B, 51 to 250 million, C, 251 to 500 million, D, 501 to 1 billion, E, over 1 billion, or F, not a credit union? Please take a few moments to respond to our poll before we get started. All right, and it looks like we are slowing down in our responses here, and we have a great mix of credit unions. As always, I hope that you guys find our discussion today incredibly helpful and informative. We have a great group of panelists, so I'm very excited to get started. Before we begin, I do also just want to take a few brief moments to mention that this is the second webinar for our MDI Awareness Month. Now, you may be asking yourself, why two webinars? What is so special about MDIs? Well, that's what we hope to accomplish and show everyone through our panel today. MDIs are not just financial institutions. They are lifelines for community development and empowerment. 
MDIs play a role in shaping the communities that they serve by addressing specific financial needs, fostering economic stability, and championing, championing financial inclusion. You will find that today's discussion touches on a variety of topics, but I hope that you will use this webinar as a starting point on your journey to learn more. If you are an MDI already, fantastic. This is a great opportunity to learn more from your peers or build new partnerships to help further serve your community. If you're not an MDI, I hope that this is the next step in your journey to becoming an MDI. So I am excited to meet for you to meet our panel today and learn more about the amazing work that they do. Our panel will be moderated by Pamela Williams, who is the program manager in the Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion and works with the Minority Depository Institution Preservation Program. And she will be leading leading our discussion. Thank you, Pamela. Welcome, and I will turn it over to you to moderate today. Thank you, Allie, for that introduction. So again, welcome, and um, we'll just go ahead and get started. So our wonderful panel of MDI Credit Union representatives are um, shown here on this PowerPoint slide. I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves and then also to introduce their MDI Credit Union by sharing a specific story or initiative that highlights the impact their credit union has had on its members um, or the community that they serve. So we'll go in the order that they're presented on the screen here, and we'll start with you, Leilani. Feel free to take yourself off mute and begin. Thank you, Pam. Uh, my name is Leilani Harpool. I'm with Oto, Missouri, a federal credit union. I've been in the industry for almost 30 years, since 95. And regarding Oto Missouri Federal, I had the privilege of actually obtaining the charter for this credit union, uh, having received it in March of 2019. In August of 2019, we opened the doors for operations, and then wouldn't you have, uh, know it, a few months later, COVID hit. So a very interesting beginning. We did keep our doors open. I think we closed more for ice days than we did for COVID. Anyway, today we are a little over 3 million in assets, and the two ways I'll mention that we've been impactful, one is pretty simple. It just has to do with our location. We are kind of in the heart of the Oto Missouri community, and the next financial uh, institution is about 25 miles in any direction. So just our presence in Red Rock makes a big, big difference. Um, but what I did find surprising was also um, the number of first time account holders that we opened up. I learned that there was a lot of distrust when it comes to financial institution and many of the tribal members. And after, you know, having opened up accounts and some of these new members getting um, getting their statements for the first time, they're calling, not even sure what they are. So we're talking about, you know, not the young people, but people in their, you know, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond, opening accounts for the very first time, and us kind of walking them through the process of checking accounts and savings accounts. So after having put together the business plan for the charter, I realized I needed to scale things back a little bit just to deal with the basics on, you know, for many of these members. So I'm proud to say we've built up a lot of trust within the community. Uh, we love our members. It's It's been eye-opening for me as well uh, when it comes to, you know, just the basics financial services and how we take them for granted. I mean, I could not believe that in Oklahoma there were actually unserved communities, but there were. So anyway, I look forward to uh, speaking more about this. And at this time, I will turn it over to Arlo. Thank you, Leilani, for sharing that story. Uh, my name is Arlo Washington. I'm the CEO of People Trust Community Federal Credit Union. And People Trust emerged out of an unmet need in our community. In 2009, Arkansas became a credit desert. That means you couldn't find credit in any, any, any anywhere in the interior counties. There's no payday lenders that operate in our state. So we had uh, our community members driving to border states to get uh, predatory payday loans or going online and still falling victim to these predatory uh, products. And so we emerged out of that unmet credit need and started providing small dollar loans uh, to our community members uh, that needed to, you know, needed to access credit that were uh, unbanked, underbanked and, and or credit invisibles. And so we did a study on the community. Um, we did, did a global views and to look at and see where the need was. And we saw that there was a huge need uh, in this community that didn't have any bank branches 
And so we started making loans in that area, reporting credit on those loans. And then we saw the credit scores rose by 62%. And so that just made us expand our efforts. Uh, you know, 2020, uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, we were able to uh, provide um, uh, uh, PPP loans um, to 2,600 small businesses nationwide. Well, those businesses needed checking accounts, but one of the things you know that we found was that the uh, financial institutions in our area were requiring credit scores in order to open up checking accounts. And so we needed to be able to solve for that. So in September of 2022, we chartered uh, People Trust Community Federal Credit Union. And since then we've uh, we've grown, we, we're uh, still under 5 million assets, and but we have, our membership has grown, we're almost at a thousand members. And um, we are, you know, providing a critical service to our community by providing second chance checking accounts or uh, pay the alternative loans and, and just being a, a conduit of resources uh, for a community that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity. And with that, I will pass it on to um, Azul. Good morning slash good afternoon, everyone. My name is Azul. I'm the CEO and president of Comunidad Latina Federal Credit Union. Comunidad Latina is a tiny little credit union in the city of Santa Ana, California in Orange County. Our branch is located in an area or in a county that has been identified as high intensity drug trafficking and high intensity financial crime. Um, a large population of, of um, this, the residents in Santa Ana are um, undocumented uh, low income area. We were founded. Um, by the support of 13 credit unions across the United States. It makes me very proud for our industry that we came together to service a specific community. Um, there was a need that was identified uh, because of uh, the high population of individuals that are were undocumented. They were being taken advantage by the local predatory lenders in the area. And together uh, we were able to found this credit union in 2006. Today, we started our first deposits were by credit unions, and I think it was about a million dollars. And today we have about 6 million in deposits and 9 million in assets. And the work with, that we do in the community is very important and unique because our members come from countries where there's a lot of corruption and they don't have trust in the banking system. They don't understand it. So it's very important for credit unions like ours to exist, to be able to cater to those specific needs and challenges. So it's, it's a pleasure to be in this community and to be here today and sharing a little bit more about us. Thank you. Thank each of you for those introductions. I really just want to touch on um, the fact that, as Ali mentioned, one of the reasons that we're doing this webinar today to hear from MDI credit unions themselves is so that those of you who are MDI credit unions that are participating on the webinar, that you will be encouraged to learn from the lessons presented here. Um, as each of these credit unions were founded to address um, a very unique challenge. And so we'll hear more from each of them about doing that. Um, but um, I want to just start with the first question of, and I think I'm going to address this to you, Arlo. Um, why is community engagement and feedback important in tailoring your MDI credit unions and products and services? Um, and so I'm asking you that question as a relatively, as one of the uh, two relatively new credit unions on the yes. panel for today. Thank you so much, Pamela, for that question. Uh, it's very important to understand and know what the community credit needs are. Uh, nobody knows what the community credit needs are better than the community members. And so we understand that if we can listen, you know, listen, listening to the members is one of the you know, main things in building that initial relationship and understanding, you know, uh, what their what their needs, goals, and plans are for their financial well-being. And so we're able to, you know, have a conversation, start with the relationship, build a relationship, and then say, hey, you know, what is it that you need uh, for this credit union to provide? You know, what conveniences? And a lot of them, you know, we found that they wanted to be able to, you know, have digital a, a, a online platform for digital banking. They wanted to be able to have a debit card. They wanted to be able to have, you know, start mentioning all these things that they want and desire from a financial institution. And so that helps us to be able to 
tailor our products and our services to fit the community in our field of membership that we serve. Thank you. And so, Arlo, is there any method of um, engagement or gathering feedback that's worked sure. best for your credit union? Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, we are in a digital age and lots of people have cell phones. And so uh, SurveyMonkey is a, uh, a definitely a huge, a huge uh, asset for us to be able to communicate with our members. We also have a database uh, within our core of, you know, all of their contact information and we can, you know, send out, you know, uh, through, um, um, you know, MailChimp or, or, or bulk SMS, we can send out massive emails or massive uh, uh, text messages to be able to, and we found that the, the text messaging gets the most feedback. You know, they people, a lot of times they may not check their, their emails regularly, but they will check those text messages and respond to those text messages. So just that's been a huge tool for us to be able to keep the lines of communication open for, you know, any changes or any, anything within our credit union that we want to let our mem members aware, make our members aware of. Terrific. Thank you for sharing that last tip about uh, the text messages and how successful yes. that's been for your credit union. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you. Sure. Next, my next question really is for you, Leilani. Um, where does your credit union get ideas for new products and services? Leilani, would you take yourself off of mute? Yes, thank you. Sorry about no, that. No worries. <laughs> okay, so um, I and other Native American credit unions are working together uh, to formally establish the Native American Credit Union Coalition. And it has just been so insightful and it's been so wonderful to be able to talk with other financial institutions who know exactly what I'm going through. And not only that, I mean, they, they're they sharing their stories and their ideas with me, but it's 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 very nice to be able to, sp to speak freely, not have to worry about saying something that may not sound politically correct because they know exactly where I'm coming from. They, they absolutely do. Um, so uh, one example is, you know, we have these small dollar loans, which is not doing what it's supposed to do. Um, I mean, we were able to, it does help in getting our members away from uh, the payday lenders, um, predatory, uh, predatory lenders, but it's, but we're not helping their credit scores very much. And so in talking to, with this uh, coalition, we're going to, you know, have the credit builder loan and that's exactly what it's going to be. And they, they've helped, you know, we're gonna make it secured. They're also letting me know what to expect when it comes to, you know, switching from one product to another product. The members aren't gonna be happy, but there's a way that, you know, they're sharing with me how we can make that happen and what to expect. So that's been absolutely wonderful. But um, again, being, I mean, aside from the members telling us, you know, what they want, what services they want, and a lot are similar to what Arlo had just mentioned. Um, I'm really, really pleased and inspired by these other credit unions that I have the opportunity to speak with to think outside the box. I mean, they see a need. Um, they see a need within um, within their community, and there is one credit union where they took over where a bank had left and um, they have just done an absolutely remarkable job and they have to ferry to get to the island. And I mean, it's just very, very different. And how do you go out and, and meet these? Uh, how do you meet the needs of your members by going there? Um, it, it's just been very, very interesting and eye opening for me as well, uh, because before I was affiliated with Oto Missouri Credit Union. I truly did not understand what a MDI was. I did not know what it meant to serve the under, underserved. I thought I did, but I, I was completely wrong. Completely wrong. Didn't have an idea. So um, yes, um, these ideas right now are primarily coming from this coalition. In addition to, of course, our members. Um, again, we are a tribal credit union. The members know that we belong to them and they are not shy in letting me know uh, what they would like to see happen. But I would also have to say for us, because we are so small, 
um, it's not just a matter of, you know, what to bring in, what services to provide, but, you know, what services are we not going to provide? Because there are also those who they're used, you know, they have other accounts as well. And, you know, they can be a little bit demanding and they want, you know, A, B and C, but it's like, no, we're not there. And, and they are understanding, but it's just a, a matter of communicating with them. So, again, um, for me, a big part has been, um, has been, uh, the agencies within the tribe and then the coalition where I'm getting very different ideas of, you know, what products to provide to meet the needs of the tribe of the members of the community. Leilani, thank you for that. If we have time, I'd really like to go back and find out a little bit more about that coalition because mm -hmm. one of the things for MDI credit unions is um, and learning from each other is knowing how to um, be a part of and leverage partnerships um, within your community and in the broader context. So if we've got some um, more time at the end, I really do want to come back and, and hear from you more about how you were able to tap into to that coalition. That sounds wonderful, especially um, being able to access that as also another relatively new credit union. So the next question for you um, is um, Azul, how do you determine your marketing and delivery methods um, based on your um, membership and your potential membership? We are small. We don't have a big marketing budget. So a lot of the work that we do is word of mouth. What we what is important to us is speaking to our members in a way that they understand. So as an example, Everyone, I'm sure everyone in this call knows about credit building and share secure loans. We offer those as well. However, through conversations with our members, we realized that the best way to to market the product was by calling it something different that they could relate to. So, for example, in many of the Latin American countries, they do something called a tanda or a cundina, which is like a lending circle where friends get together to let each other borrow money. So we decided to change the name of our credit builder to a tanda loan. And we post it all over the branch because we do have the limited resources. We can't send out, you know, we can't have a lot of marketing um, dollars, but our members have responded very well to it. Also, we realized that many of our members did not have that initial deposit to put as a, for the share secure loan. So we, we did a reverse loan where the member will make the payments and then we'll give them the, the credit for those funds. And that has also been, been very popular. So it's just understanding the community that we're serving. Something that really helps us is hiring individuals from the community, people that understand firsthand the challenges that they're experiencing and understand from, from um, their family or their community experience what is needed here, what kind of products, what kind of services, and what is the best way to, to share the information with our members so they could take advantage of those. Thank you, Leila, um, um, Azul. And so follow-up question. Before you change the name of that product, did you offer it under a traditional name first? How did you come to um, determine that the product um, the product would have more um, traction by by changing the name? We um, I was not here when that happened. The change happened before I got here, and the previous um, CEO he did a lot of research. Um, a lot of surveys, a lot of getting to know the members. He himself was part of the community, so he understood what Atanda was and why it was important for us to change it. And um, we have continued to um, just to use his methods of, of understanding our members and research, and we continue to hire people from the community. We continue to have um, learning circles, or that's something that we've just recently implemented implemented learning circles, getting together with small groups of the community and getting to know what they need through conversations. And it's just easy, free flowing conversations, um, you know, with coffee and, and conchas, um, the Mexican bread, and that's that's what we do. So um, each of you through three different questions have really touched on the whole concept of establishing trust within your each uniquely situated communities um, and potential field of membership. 
And so I think that's such a, in, in three different questions, you've all interwoven that common thread of, we realized we needed to establish trust. Our, our credibility and our success depended on us establishing this trust factor in terms of meeting our members where they are. And that's such a common theme of the important work that minority depository institutions um, are, are, are doing throughout the country. So um, kudos to all of you for, for being able to, to, to bring that concept out. So as we kind of um, uh, start to draw towards the end, I'm gonna give each of you a chance to, part of what we want to do out of this webinar is for any credit unions that have, um, are eligible for the MDI designation, but have not self-designated, we want to give them some encouragement to consider the MDI designation. So I'm going to ask each of you, what advice would you have for a credit union that qualifies but has not self-designated as a minority depository institution? And in any order that you want to address that, um, feel free to take yourself off mute. I'll go ahead and jump in on this if that's okay. Okay, so uh, for those who are considering it, oh, Please do, please do, please do, because it has been a very interesting adventure for me. Um, if for those I've been at, you know, other another larger credit union and one that's, you know, that was about 50 million. And again, we, we did not, we did not self designate as MDI, but if you could just carve, you know, a part of your credit union, uh, to learn more about the communities that you serve, it would be incredibly rewarding. And it's definitely more than having someone who speaks, you know, a foreign language in your lobby. It is so much more than that. It's actually building a relationship with a particular segment of the community. And so I, I would highly, highly encourage it. it. It's very rewarding. It does take a bit more work. Um, it, it will be, it will be some work, but, um, I, I just can't encourage it enough. And the thought of, let's say, you know, the pride that that community would have in knowing that, you know, this particular ABC credit union is actually our community credit union. To have that kind of pride speaks volumes. It, it changes the identity for the better of the credit union. It's not just going to be kind of the cookie cutter, you know, we're all so similar in so many ways that this is a, a one way that you could differentiate for yourself. So, um, again, if you're considering it, I would encourage you that, you know, at your next strategy meeting to definitely, you know, make this one of your goals. You'll love it. You won't regret it. Thank you. I would agree. Um, I think that you're probably already doing the work. You're, you're already going above and beyond in helping the, the community that you're serving. Why not go through the extra steps to become MDI and be able to utilize the resources that that comes with? Um, and I encourage you to reach out to other credit unions that already have the designation or organizations that could help with, um, especially if you are of a smaller size, there's a lot of resources that you can use to help you get this designation. And it's not only for you as a credit union, but it, it's really for your members. It's to have additional resources so you could continue doing great things. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ilana and Azul, for sharing that. Um, you know, I, I think about the, you know, it's, it's, I encourage it because it's, it's about identifying and being intentional about, about your mission. And, you know, minority uh, communities a lot of times are often uh, left behind and not and underserved. And so for our credit union, it was something that we wanted to uh, self-designate and identify and, and let it be known that, hey, we are specifically focused on this population of uh, individuals in our field of membership because, you know, uh, the, the needs are there. You know, again, these are uh, minority depository institutions are, if you think about, um, uh, you know, uh, historical colleges, there's, uh, there, there's something that was a badge of pride for your credit union to be able to, you know, identify with this particular uh, uh, designation. And so I encourage it because it, again, it helps to really zone in on that mission and, and share that story. 
Terrific. Um, thank you each for that. Uh, one of the, um, I am going to use a couple minutes and go back to you Leilani on the, the question. So I know that in my work with um, MDI credit unions, um, mentorship and partnership and collaboration are um, uh, topics that come up frequently that MDIs, especially, um, and someone mentioned here, especially small MDIs, really would like to be able to avail themselves of. Would you just share in just a, a brief couple of minutes about how you learned about the um, coalition that um, you are um, going to soon be a part of? And how did you just even know where to start with finding um, um, alliances and, and partners? This, oh goodness, it all just kind of came together. Um, I want to give credit to Helen Mickel. Uh, she's with one of the Alaska Credit Unions, and I think she is probably the one who truly spearheaded this coalition. Um, they, she, she was the one I was talking about. I believe another uh, finance, a bank had left the community, and they came in and they just took over, and they're thriving now in, in that area. They, they do serve more than just you know just the minority. Um, communities. But anyway, um, I know that Helen, she mentioned it at the GAC. That was, I think, the first time it actually came out. She was one of the speakers and she had mentioned it there. And um, I actually, uh, when I was speaking at the GAC and one of these uh, little little sessions for, uh, for MDIs, um, I, I think somehow my name might have got out there and she reached out to me. So I'm very fortunate in that regard. I'm, I'm grateful, you know, uh, to, to, you know, she reached out to me and asked if I would be interested. It actually happened on LinkedIn of all things, I believe. So, and I said, yeah, absolutely. And so um, she's, we all have, um, we're, we're starting to kind of spread. It's me and I think there might be about five others who have come together and we are now slowly uh, trying to get the information out that there is a coalition coming again we're, we're hoping to roll this out in november of this year which is native american month uh, for the native american um, credit unions and and it's and we're still working through the mission statement the vision what we really want to do so we're still at the infancy stage of getting this coalition together but i do know that uh, some of us have already started talking to our leagues about it uh, to get their involvement and also to help get the word out um, because we really want this thing to be successful and again we all know the importance of collaboration and to be able to speak about the same issues again without worrying about offending by saying something you think might be wrong in the wrong in the wrong circle it's just not that way so yeah we are we are in the process of just now getting the word out getting the leagues involved you know for for their help and uh but no we're we're we'll We'll just have to see what comes. I mean, right now, we, I think we've, we've almost got our mission uh, and the vision nailed down and uh, we're working, um, we are working on getting the word out right now because November, we really want this thing, you know, ready to go. And I do believe with some of the Native American uh, credit unions, if they're interested, you know, please, you know, reach out to me. I'll be happy to connect you, you know, with the coalition because, you know, we want we want to help the professionals who are serving these communities. Uh, we want to help our membership. Um, but, you know, and the more ideas, the better. The more Perfect. ideas, the better. Thank you, Leilani. Um, so you've just kind of given a plug for the benefit of networking at um, conferences and other gatherings. Um, um, GAC, the Governmental Affairs um, Conference, is um, a wonderful um, networking opportunity. So thank you for sharing how that opportunity presented itself. Um, so Leilani, Arlo, um, Azul, um, my appreciation to each of you for sharing the value um, and experiences that you've gained um, in a couple of cases in such short years as credit unions. Um, and um, you, you are all three a fount of information and so really appreciate the time that you've taken to partici participate in the webinar today. Right now, um, Ali, if you'll go to our next um, slide, 
I want to make sure that we get to our next panel. And those um, that's a panel of credit union leagues. And for the second half of this webinar, you'll hear from representatives from two leagues on how they serve their members credit unions like yours. So having the leagues share their experiences, we hope to help increase your awareness of another potential resource that may be available to support your credit union. Someone else already mentioned um, credit union leagues. I think it was you, um, Leilani. And so um, you've kind of given a, a segue to this next panel. So I'm going to invite um, Anthony to first take himself off mute and introduce himself and his league, and then you'll hear from Robin. Anthony? Thank you so much, Pam. Uh, yes, I'm Anthony Ware, the second director of legislative advocacy for uh, the Louisiana Credit Union League. Um, been in the credit union industry now a little over 12 years. Uh, both of that time spent at one of the larger uh, credit unions here in Louisiana, uh, where I started off as a part-time teller and uh, worked my way up uh, eventually and uh, leading to business and community development officers. So uh, that's where my one of my greatest passions uh, for credit unions uh, help people helping people serving the underserved uh, really comes from and so being able to take that uh, credit union experience now into the league side and the advocacy uh, space uh, has been great and tremendous um, and so with that I I'll pass it over to Robin. Thank you Anthony and I'm glad to be here today my name is Robin Hollis I'm a community development officer with the Illinois Credit Union League in my role as a community development officer I support minority depository institutions low-income designated credit unions, community development financial institutions, and I also help charter new credit unions that are looking to charter uh, within our state. I've been in the industry for a little bit over 30 years. I started off as a CEO of a small credit union, a C, a, well, chief financial officer, and then I went into the role of a CEO of that credit union, and I also uh, was a state examiner before joining our Illinois Credit Union League. And I'll turn it back over to Pam. So, Robin, I'm going to stay with you. Thank you both for introducing yourself. Robin, give us a specific example of how Illinois Credit Union League um, supports minority depository institutions. It could be whether it's um, chartering um, with a new management team. Um, give us a specific example of how you've worked with um, a, a credit union. I'll start off with um, the majority of the credit unions within our state uh, that are MDI credit unions are, they, first of all, they represent 11% of the credit unions that we serve and their average asset size is under 150 million. So the first thing we have to ensure that we have inclusive pricing, right? That allows the MDI credit unions to be able to join our league and take advantage of all of the services that we offer. So our uh, league prices are dues on a sliding scale so that those credit unions could belong. But we also go a step further than that. We also reach out to all of the vendors that we partner with to ensure that they have pricing for small credit unions so that our small credit unions can be a part of the different products and services uh, that are available to them. So an example that I would give of, of, of working with that and that inclusive pricing would be with the Faith-Based Credit Union Alliance, which is a group of small asset size credit unions within our state that during, 2020, during the pandemic, they didn't have access to financial services uh, to serve their members, electronic financial services to serve their members. So they didn't have any e-services. So it was like, how are we gonna serve our members during the pandemic? We worked with those credit unions and partnered and collaborated with those credit unions to ensure that they got grant money to be able to get the e-services that they needed. So they were able to get a core processor. They were able to also um, get access to the other things that they needed to operate that core uh, website, uh, digital forms, online forms, all at no cost to those credit unions. So that was going back, working with all partners across the industry that supported that effort and brought about that pricing. Thank you. Um, and so for credit unions that are on um, the call today who have not actually tapped into um, the resources of their um, state 
credit union leagues. Um, we we'll hope that they will be encouraged to do so, and um, hopefully um, those leagues, you've given us something to think about in terms of the reasonableness of the price structure based on um, the asset size of credit unions. Thank you for that, Robin. Um, so, Anthony, I want to ask you, um, we heard from the MDI panel about the importance of engaging with the communities that they are serving. Um, from a, a from a league perspective, what role does community engagement play in developing the supports that your league offers? Thank you so much for that question, Pam. Uh, community engagement is, is paramount. Uh, as Arlo, Azul, and Leilani said, uh, reaching out to the community is going to where you get the most bang for your buck. And from a league perspective, our community, our members, our, our credit unions. So we heavily rely on those credit unions uh, going out there and really reaching their community and bringing the needs of their community back to the league where we are a resource um, to it. And so from, from our standpoint, we support our credit unions on, on different initiatives and engagements that they may have going in the community. But more importantly, we want to provide the resources for our credit unions to be effective and have a sustainable impact and sustainable change um, with the initiatives that they're doing. So whether it be from a league partnership, uh, someone like Inclusive, uh, for example, where they have an MDI network and being able to provide education and support to our to our credit unions, or just doing some of the legwork, whether we talk about vetting uh, different partners or potential partners, uh, so that's one less step that our credit unions have to do and they can be efficient um, and, and be good stewards of their members' money and not necessarily have to waste it going through uh, that process. So that's something that we do. As well as um, when, when we look at MDI, there's also the, uh, the undertone of uh, DEI. And so uh, another partnership that we have as well is AACUC. So when we look at um, things of DEI Academy and uh, board ready or C-level uh, training for those executives, because once you begin to serve um, that minority designation, what does your leadership team look like internally, once again, to effectively develop products and services that are going to be sustainable for that community. So from the league side, uh, I think, Pam, you just mentioned to it, look out to your league as a resources. We are here, the credit unions uh, that pay their dues, you guys pay your dues for a service. And so challenge us, Come to us when you have that opportunity that you're looking at uh, within the community. Look to your league first because we can foster things like Leilani said, collaboration. So whether it's an MDI uh, roundtable where we're bringing everyone to the table and, and just being able to share uh, best practices or share ideas, fostering those things, that is what your league, uh, what you pay your leagues do for. So please challenge us on, on that. Anthony, I love it. Thank you. You kind of touched on almost exactly the same things that Leilani mentioned when she talked about um, how she was able to connect with um, other Native American um, credit unions to form a partnership or collaboration is that whole networking and and using the leagues as a possible vehicle to network. Um, and so it was great to hear that the leagues themselves are partnering with other credit union trade organizations to bring the, um, the, the services to their credit union members. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, I want to ask each of you, or basically give you an opportunity to um, plug um, any upcoming announcements um, or events for either of your leagues that might be of interest to um, minority depository institutions, whoever wants to start first. All right, I can start. Um, so uh, two, two events that we're having, we're having our small asset size conference and we talked about MDI, the majority of them in our state being small asset size. So August 8th through the 9th is our small asset size conference. And then uh, we also have out right now a multicultural opportunity report that we partnered with Coopera to prepare that talks about the changing demographics of our state, uh, in, which is heavily focused on minority communities. So I highly encourage minority depositories to download that report. Not only does it talk about the changing demographics, but how credit unions are positioned to address the needs of those communities. 
So those two things are uh, just wanted to highlight. And then also with that multicultural opportunity report, there is a wonderful opportunity out there for credit unions that want to engage. We're having a, um, a actual contest. So credit unions can participate in the contest and submit an idea on how they can uh, create an initiative using ideas from the multicultural opportunity report. And if you win, you get $5,000 to actually put that idea forward. I'll turn it over to Anthony. Thank you, Robin. Uh, so one thing we actually currently have going on is our cross-cultural exchange program uh, between Louisiana and Michigan. Um, and what that is, is we took a group of executives from, from both states and uh, we matched them. So someone complete, like almost like the complete opposite of one another to be able to uh, cross and, and share ideas and just share perspectives. Because one thing that we we'll, we realize is that oftentimes like we get on the physical or exterior um, differences and don't realize and understand that we're so much more alike than, than we are different. And so being able to share those ideas again from the executive level, from that leadership team on down to filtrate um, and infiltrate uh, a credit union's culture um, is one thing that we're currently fostering. Outside of that, we, we're big right now on our, um, on our convention, so that's coming up. But uh, you can always stay up abreast to us via LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, or, or via our website, uh, lcul.com. Thank you both, um, Anthony Robin, for participating on the webinar today. Um, you've highlighted for um, the credit unions that are participating, whether they are in your state or not. Um, you've highlighted um, for them what they can um, possibly realize by working with their credit union league. So thank you for that, especially to those who hadn't considered um, accessing the resources that are available for their credit union leagues, and hopefully they'll now be able to do so. So um, I'm going to now turn, um, want to thank both the, the credit union league um, panelists as well as the MDI uh, panelists and um, Allie, what I'd like to do now is it looks like we do have some questions that have come in. And so I'll turn it over to you for to begin the Q&A segment. Allie. Perfect. Thank you so much, Pam. You're exactly right. I was seeing some questions come in as we were going through our discussion today. So I will actually turn it over to my counterpart on the training team to go ahead and lead us through our question and answer session. Ron, over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Ali. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Lilani, Arlo, Alzo, Robin, and um, and Anthony for your great uh, answers to the questions and all the information you provided. So you did have a couple questions. They are mostly uh, directed toward the credit unions when the credit union panelists were speaking. But I'd like to hear from either Robin or Anthony if they have any input. On these two questions, it would be good to hear from the league perspective if they have one. Um, one is a very practical one, and it says, are any participants exploring the use of third party data, such as Clarita cycle information to identify, understand and engage current and prospect prospective members? So, um, anyone can jump in and answer that credit union or league. If you have any familiarity, I am not familiar with Claritas at all, but um, I understand the question about third party data. So, however, you would like to answer it, please jump in. I'll jump in. Uh, I, I am not from a perspective, we are not familiar uh, with the company that was outlined. Um, I, I would just say, you know, of course, do your if you're using any third party, reach out to your league because they may have, have already partnered with someone that can get that data or that information for you. Um, and then just always, of course, make sure, you know, what you're getting is going to be uh, really useful. And some of it you may be able to get out and do yourself um, if it's in your already in that community. So and of course, you would have the, the connection. So uh, although I'm not familiar with them, just reach out to your league uh, on, on that. Sounds like sound advice, Anthony. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I'll, I will move on to the next question. And that is, I'd be interested in how panelists and others are identifying and engaging in co-branded offering or co-marketing efforts with nonprofits in their communities. So I will 
throw that out to anyone that league or credit union, either one. If you have a perspective you'd like to share, please do. For any, sorry, it's as well for any partnership, any co branded marketing or event that we are planning on doing or that we have done. It is really important for us that the values of that organization are aligned with the values of the credit union that we're trying to serve the same purpose and. Our particular community has been taken advantage for for a very long time. And it's important for us to know that whoever we're working with um, has a good reputation already, that they have the same interests. That is my the best advice I could give you is how are they perceived by by your members already and only work with people that genuinely are doing it for the best interest and not to try to gain, you know, um, commissions or money out of our members. Thank you, Azul. Also good advice. Yeah. Anyone else pretty. want to add to that? Sure. Yes, go right ahead, Robin. <laughs> yeah, I would just piggyback on that. Our league uh, co-brands uh, events with various partners that we've already vetted and, and partnered with. And so we will co-brand uh, different things with them, as well as uh, collaborations that we've helped build. Uh, then we will have co-branding with those collaborations that, that have been uh, fostered and built. Very good. Thank you very, very much. I'm looking to make sure uh, I don't see any more questions. We got some info on Clarita, so thank you. Um, but I don't see any more questions. But I do have one for our credit union panels. When you were talking about products and services, did any of you get a request from your members for product or service that you were not able to or ready to offer? And if so, how did you respond to your membership? Uh, I can take that one. Our, um, you know, we, being a new credit union, we needed to have a way for our members to be able to make their financial transactions. And so um, we didn't have a debit card program. And so what we were able to do, you know, we had to talk to, of course, the community members knew that we were a new credit union and they understood, but they were saying, well, hey, well, we really want to join, but we need to be able to, you know, make these transactions. And so um, we let them know that we were in the process of, of establishing a debit card program. But in the meantime, we had a workaround. And the workaround was a prepaid debit card that they would be able to use. And uh, and so they were happy about that. And through Invisent, thankfully, uh, and, and we were able to offer a, a means for our members to be able to make their financial transactions and access their money in their accounts. So, um, yeah, that's one of our, that's our story. Very good. Thank you, Anthony. I mean, I'm sorry. Anthony, Thank uh, you, Arlo. Uh, um, so sorry, uh, Arlo. <laughs> Yes, Thanks Robin, go ahead. Yeah, that was just a plug for Invisent. That's our for-profit arm. And I just wanted to talk about, you talked about the power of conferences. Ran into Arlo at a conference. And I, I think it was an inclusive conference, yes. And he was telling me about the problem that he was having. I made the suggestion that he reach out and that this may be a workaround for him. So that's just the power of being able to network at conferences and bring things like that as a solution to your members. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Very good, very good. Now, I, I do have a question for the leagues, league reps we have. M most, many of your members, as you pointed out, Robin, are, are small credit unions. What are some of the issues you see small or MDI credit unions facing, some of the major ones? And, and what is your advice to them on how to overcome some of those hurdles? Major, uh, so two of the major problems that, that we have uh, is just uh, having the financial resources and having the human resources to do certain things. Um, smaller credit unions find themselves limited in that area quite frequently. So one of the things that we encourage from our league is collaborating, collaborating with others to get that done. You know, we can go a lot further together if we work together. Uh, and I just found, we found that our league that by collaborating, you can make some of those those things happen. What you think was impossible to do based on your own resources, if you partner with other people, you can get it done. When you talk about like services that you know uh, your members may have asked for that you're not ready to offer, by collaborating, sometimes you're able to bring those services to light for your members. It may be business lending, mortgage lending, 
things like that. If you collaborate with other credit unions or other third parties, you can get some of that work uh, done. So that um, I think I hope I answered the question. <laughs> yes, you did. Thank you, Robin. I like that answer. Thank you very much. Uh, Anthony, and, and, did you have and, anything? Yes. Yeah, I, I was just going to uh, uh, piggyback on that uh, because here in Louisiana, a, a lot of our credit unions are, are under 50 million as well. Uh, but the one thing I can say is, is although you may be a small credit union uh, compared to the report or maybe some other credit union, is you don't have to think small. And and I and I think that's the, the important thing. Like you said, if you're listening to your community, if you have the pulse of that community, you're plugged in with your lead to help and get those resources. We can foster that collaboration because it, it could be, like you said, Robin, a group of credit unions getting together to provide that service and uh, share that cost across those credit unions to provide those services um, to, to those communities. So although they, they may be a small credit union, don't think small because that's if you start thinking small, that's how a lot of uh, the smaller credit unions either, you know, uh, merge, you know, or, or die on the vine. So just don't think small. Very good. I would like to yes. add, uh, I would like to add. Yes, please, that Azul, go right ahead. I. I feel very proud, not only of the community, but also the credit unions that are in our area here in Santa Ana and even beyond. Um, I get support from across the country and, and not only with, you know, deposits so we could continue lending, but also with resources. And we have the same story. Um, as Arlo, when they were, we, our members wanted debit cards. We, we got, we went with the same company. Now, our, uh, our members want, um, if they want a business account, for example, and we know we don't have the resources, we trust in the partnerships that we have with these credit unions in the area that want to see us be successful because they understand the value. I encourage you, if you're a small credit union, to get to know those credit unions in the area and ask for help, ask for, for partnerships. Um, right now, we, our members are asking for mortgage loans. We're tiny. We, we have four staff members. There's no way we could offer mortgages at this time, but we know that we can refer them to someone in the area that we know will treat them the same, that, the same way that we will. Very good. Thank you, Azul. So, Ali, it looks like we're almost at the top of the hour. And since we don't have any more questions and we've already gotten plenty of really good useful helpful information from all five of our panelists i'm going to turn it back over to you thank you so much ron and i do just want to say again thank you to azul arlo leilani robin and anthony the information you all provided today is going to be so incredibly helpful for credit unions and MDI credit unions, the opportunity to hear from you know their their fellow credit unions, right? What what are you guys doing in in your communities, is just immensely helpful, right? And and seeing people who have gone through it and, and having that partnership is is wonderful. So thank you so much for taking the time to participate on our panel and then taking questions from our viewers as well and providing that additional support for for everybody, both from our MDI credit unions and from our leagues. That is. Uh, I think Ron said it several times, right? And I agree with him. It is all fantastic advice and it's going to be incredibly helpful. So I just want to say thank you guys so much. Um, like I mentioned, we are in the middle of our MDI awareness month. So that will continue throughout the entire month of June. Um, this is the last webinar that we have for our MDI awareness month, but we do have new articles and new information that will be released every single day throughout the end of June on resources available to MDIs. So please stay tuned, um, you know, LinkedIn, if you are part of our email delivery service, we always have that information coming out uh, every single day. We also have our CDRLF grant round available to low income designated credit unions and MDIs that are also low income designated. That grant round does close July 1st. Um, if you have any additional questions about your application or need any assistance, the last day to submit questions for the grant round will be June 24th. So please reach out if you need any assistance in filling out that application. Uh, MDIs who are also low income designated, this is a great opportunity to get any additional funding that you may need for additional projects that your credit union has to help serve your community. 
We also have going on during the month of July our DEI summit that is hosted by the Office of Minority and Women Inclusion. This will be held in Minneapolis, Minnesota from July 9th through the 11th. They have a fantastic agenda planned. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend last year and it was such a great experience and I learned so much. So please, if you are interested in registering, uh, take a look at our website or use that QR code to find out more information. I encourage you to register. It is a great learning opportunity as well. We mentioned several times today th uh, throughout our webinar, our learning management system before we kicked off. Like I mentioned, it has over 200 courses. This webinar will also be posted onto our learning management system for your viewing. Um, we'll just have to update our closed captions. Uh, it'll also have the PDF available for you guys as well on a variety of topics uh, serving the underserved is one of our newest courses that ron actually completed for us so i want to give him a shout out he worked very hard and it is a fantastic course we talked several times about serving the underserved community and these are courses with great resources to be able to assist they are free to all credit union employees and volunteers so please sign up today as well and I'll round out our webinar with contact information for the Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion, or CURE. So we have two divisions within CURE, our Division of Consumer Access, which will handle everything from chartering, field of membership expansion, um, any and all questions that you guys may have. Uh, please feel free to reach out to them using the email addresses and phone numbers provided. And then, of course, I have the information for the division of resources. So resources division consists of Pamela Williams, who has joined us and moderated our discussion, as well as myself and Ron Good, who works with training. And we also have a fantastic grants and loans team. So if you have any questions on anything regarding CDFI certification, grants and loans, learning, the MDI preservation program, anything that we can assist with, please reach out using these email addresses and phone numbers. We are happy and available to support in any way that we can. Um, and I'd also like to take one additional moment to, to thank our support staff here today, who without them, we would not be able to have a successful webinar. So Franz, who is our technical support, who is always fantastic in anything and everything regarding our webinar and our platform, I want to take a moment and say thank you. Um, thank you to Ron for a great Q&A session and Jasmine for assistance in uh, getting those questions together. And for Pam for moderating our session today. Today. Um, and one last thank you to our panelists as well. Thank you everybody for taking your time to join us and provide the fantastic advice and information and resources for our MDI credit unions. I know it is greatly appreciated and I always learn a lot and I love having you guys on. So I hope that everybody else did as well. Um, but thank you for joining us and to our viewers. Thank you for your time and attendance. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. This concludes our webinar. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.